Taylor Swift once again stole the show at the Grammy Awards. Unfortunately, this year's edition was not a good one for a K-pop or K-pop artist. We're joined by Professor Sitter Bao Siju this morning. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Taylor Swift made history yet again by becoming the first artist to win the prize for Album of the Year four times. Professor, does she deserve the honor? Well, I think her fans uh, believe that she does. She's really reached the hearts of people around the world, uh, and she's undeniably a cultural titan. But uh, I don't personally listen to her music, and considering that four of her competitors for Album of the Year were people of color, and it's been 25 years since a black woman won Album of the Year, maybe it would have been more memorable and significant if a different nominee had won last night. Mm. Well, it's not just Swift. Female artists also really proved themselves at this year's ceremony from, you know, Miley Cyrus to Billie Eilish. What does it say about the music industry trends nowadays? I think basically there's a lot of exceptionally amazing female artists who are out there in the in the industry right now. And with this large number of women nominated and winning, I think it's going to encourage a new generation of young female artists. Right, and that's also in line with the usual controversy of them being the so-called, you know, all white Grammys. How how would you say it was this year? Well, I really appreciated that Jay Z uh, talked at the Grammys about how the Academy still isn't getting it right. Mm -hmm. uh, women are recognized, but um, it it just seems like the math, as he said, doesn't add up. And even though Trevor Noah was hosting again, and despite performances by non-white artists, it did not feel like we've left that white Grammy era behind. I personally, I, I thought seeing Tracy Chapman smile was the most memorable mm -hmm. part of the entire broadcast, but that doesn't seem momentous enough to be the highlight of the biggest award show in music. Definitely. Now, I have to, we have to talk about K-pop. Unfortunately, it didn't get any of the spotlight at this year's ceremony. What, what do you think what happened? Well, the Grammys have always been primarily about the USA and to a certain extent, English language music produced with an emphasis on the US market. Mm -hmm. And K-pop is focused on outward expansion and it does want the approval of the US market, but it's also looking at the rest of the world. K-pop hasn't lost itself chasing an American dream. And in many ways, it's more global than the regionally focused artists at the Grammys. So BTS had this historic five nominations, and that was a great way for the Recording Ad Academy to gesture at how up to the moment it was and a way to court new audiences. But it also seems like the Academy may not be aware that other K-pop acts exist. And in 2023, the story in K-pop was about girl groups, you know, New Jeans, Blackpink, I've, you know, all these amazing groups that have been so dominant in K-pop. And it seems like in the best pop duo or group category, the Recording Academy usually nominates a solo artist with a featuring artist. Um, and, and they really like people who write their own songs. And mm. it just seems like K-pop somehow doesn't fit the Recording Academy model for a reward in this uh, category. Right, it does look like they do have their own qualifications when honoring those artists, especially uh, within the U.S. But can we be hopeful that the next edition hopefully be a better one for K-pop and K-pop artists? Well, I hope so. Korea has many world-class artists. If, if Boy Genius can win an award for alternative music, there's no reason why Hyeko couldn't be nominated for the same category. Mm -hmm. Korea has and continues to produce music of a caliber equivalent to what is honored at the Grammys. Will it happen? Could Hyeko take home a Grammy in 2025? <laughs> I, I, I personally would like to see Asian and Korean representation as part of the televised section of the Grammys. But for that to happen, the Recording Academy and the U.S. listening public needs to shift to be less parochial and more global in their orientation. Indeed, indeed. All right, Professor Seiji, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You have a great day. You too.